Hi guys, James from DBG and welcome to the third and final part of the uh, Flames of War Vietnam Miniatures Rescue. Obviously last time you saw the infantry, this time you're seeing the vehicles. And uh, yeah, so what we have, if we just pan over there, we have the Vietnamese, the North Vietnamese anti-aircraft vehicles, I think they're called ZU-57s, I could be wrong. Uh, we have the two T-34s, we have the M48 Patton, the little boat, the river, uh, Brownwater Navy craft, the amphibious landing vehicle, the odd World War II vehicles that for some reason are in there, the M113s in various configurations, and the UH-1 Hueys. Uh, if you hear any weird noises, that's my son. Uh, he's playing on the Xbox, so yeah, anyway. So, and also, if you notice, some of the vehicles are on bases. Um, basically, the, what the client said was that the one well, the T-34s were so badly damaged, it was, it was a resin metal kit, it was badly built, so badly damaged, that he said if you if like a model one has been knocked out, model the other one as if it's been bogged and the same with the m48 pan uh, so basically all i did there was get some spare large flames or bases get my um filler and my sand and what have you and just build up this conglomeration this quagmire of mud and stuff around the wheels and um base of the tank oh, sorry underneath the hull of the tank um, and with the this T-34 which is a knocked out one I drilled a hole in the side of the turret and another hole in the back just represent the fact it's been shot up a bit um, and if we go over to the Hueys um, I have filled the monumental gaps to the best of my ability I am not the best with green stuff um, I do not like using model filler. I have this. I will show you. I have this. It's awful stuff. Awful stuff. I've never been able to work out how to use it correctly or with any level of skill whatsoever. It just leaves an awful mess. It takes an age to dry. And then you need to spend ages filing it down afterwards. So yeah, I don't use it. So I use green stuff, um, obviously after all, filing apart, because the person who built it left all the little sprue burrs while building it, which is why it's, they're so wonky. Yes, and also you can tell that they, this one, this is the resin and metal battlefront Huey. Um, there wasn't enough rotors supplied with the box of stuff. So uh, thankfully, the client has a set of spare rotors. So yeah, um, that's pretty much that pretty much covers everything, I think. So yeah, so let's start over here with the um, Vietnamese stuff. So this is the, like I said, I think it's ZU-57 anti-aircraft vehicle. This again, as you can see at the front here, Broken bits of resin that weren't in the box, so I couldn't fix it. And I used um, Vallejo, um, I'm using the painting guides in the Vietnam book that I have, using Vallejo Russian uniform. I really am enjoying using the Vallejo paints. It's becoming a bit of a... Um, the only issue I have is squeezing too much paint out. So, yeah, this is one that I have to do the head swaps on. Um, I also believe that these could have been uh, for the Iran-Iraq war, the oil war version of the game, not the um, Vietnam version of the game, which is why the crew look distinctly un-Asian. Anyway, so here's the knocked out T-34. Focus, there we go. You see there's the hole in the side of the turret, done some scorching. I've um, 
See, non-oil is brilliant. So all this, I did that to look like an oil leak or scorched ground where stuff's caught fire. If you just pull some non-oil down there, it just looks like oil was leaked out of the back of the tank and at the back, I've made a real mess of the back, purposefully, to represent um, scorching, fires, etc, etc. And then, then there's my uh, lovely mix of filler and sand and gravel that I used to represent earth and stuff like that. It's really handy for um, doing room buildings, especially in 15mm scale like these guys are. Here is the bogged one. This is the one that was slightly better built. Um, again, I've done some scorching at the back just to represent the fact that they over rev the engine trying to get it out of the mug. And I did a bit, I put different mug guards on because the ones that were on were absolutely awful. Then we have the M48. Now this one, I believe, this is not a Battlefront model. This is um, either Command Decision or Peter Pig. I don't know, but it is metal. Judging by um, the moulding, I would say this is Peter Pig. Um, and on this one, just to represent dirt and grime, I did a really thin um, wash. I've got um, Revell. Um, dark earth, which I use pretty much for everything that's sort of like light earthy colour. <clears throat> I thinned it down, added a tiny bit of grit, and um, just applied it to the edges where dried dirt would uh, congregate. So, yeah, that's that. Um, then we got the boat. I pulled the boat off the uh, wooden base. I mean, this is just clearly a resin or a 3D print. And apparently this is a Navy SEAL fast uh, deployment boat. Didn't know that. So yeah. So yeah, just uh, repainted that. That is um, painted in US olive drab, which is an amazing colour. And um, yeah, I, I just can't recommend Vallejo colours enough. I'm used to... Um, Obviously, Citadel colours. Um, here's the boat. Again, it's a piece of pig. This is resin. The only thing with this one is I wish that the uh, the crew hadn't been stuck in. Because I found it quite difficult to get into the nooks and crannies to paint the crew. Especially this guy here, manning the 40mm um, grenade launcher. And if you can hear that, that is my um, I think it's about to go on Rainbow Six. Now this is an amphibious landing craft um, used by the United States Marine Corps. I have no idea what it's called. I remember seeing it in, um, what film is it? Boys from Company C, uh, which is actually a very good Vietnam film. A very good Vietnam film. Um, it's got Arnie Amory in it. One of the many Vietnam films he's done. But yeah, I hardly recommend it. Yeah, so this is a single piece kit. Uh, this is one of the ones that I stripped right way down to bare resin. You can tell it's resin by uh, the lovely air bubbles at the bottom. Um, then just added some spare decals. I don't know if the decals are correct, but it needed a little bit of extra zhuzhing. Um, yeah, the M20 and the um, Jeeps. Yeah, I'll leave those alone. I've just painted them in Vietnam era colours instead of World War II colours. I've done Jeeps before. Now this is an M1 th M113 Zippo, which basically means that that turret on the top has a flamethrower in it, and what looks like a um, air-cooled 30 cal. Oh, it could be a 50 cal, I don't know. Yeah, so again, these, this one's plastic, and the M113 kit from Battlefront is actually really nice. I've built a couple of them. I do recommend them, especially if you're doing Cold War era stuff. Like this M113 is metal. And I think it's, again it's either command decision or Peter Pig again. 
Um, judging by the crew that's in it, I'm guessing it's command decision because I haven't got the Peter Pig face. But yeah, so it's, as you see, it's not as well detailed. There's lots of moulding pits and stuff down the side, but it actually kind of makes it look worn and used. And then we'll just look at this one here with all the pips in. This is another one. With all the extra people with the 50 cal and the two M60s. Now we're on to the Hueys. We're going to start with the um, the resin one. This is a resin Huey with metal components to it. It's got metal tail fins, skids, crew, doors. Oh, oh, focus. Come on, focus, focus. There we go. Done some wet blending on the, um, on the windscreens. Off had all the, all the glass. Um, and um, as you can see, all the gaps have been filled. Then we have the plastic battlefront Hueys. This one with the door, door gunner, who's clearly a 1980s style one. And you can tell this is a slightly later model Huey by the engine at the top. Uh, the rotor blades are blue tacked in because uh, there's not enough magnets. Yeah, so these are filled and underneath filled. Unfortunately, I didn't have a, tra um, a transparent green, so I had to use a, an opaque green for the uh, coloured perspex at the top of the canopy. And then last but not least, we have the other Huey, which was slightly better built, I have to say. Um, it did actually have crew in it, but without doing some serious focus, some serious hacking and slashing, it basically would have meant... Um, getting rid of the two door M60s and starting again I couldn't put the crew back in because they just wouldn't fit in correlation with the um, the door guns so I decided to take the crew out so there we go that is the end of this little project it's been um, um, it's been fun. Uh, well, some of it's been fun. Uh, working with green stuff again after so long, not so much. Um, trying to figure out what bits go where on some of the resin metal kits that have been um, badly put together and bits have been lost. And the way it was packed in the box was just... Oh, there's no excuse for that level of mispacking. Um, yeah, so anyway... So that's over, it's on to um, some other bits for me. Um, I'm building up a stock of stuff that I can possibly sell when I lose my job, which is definitely going to happen, just don't know when. Um, and then obviously I've got a February, February job arrived a couple of days ago, so that's all in a box ready to go for February. So, as usual guys, do check out the links in the description to all the stuff in there. There's Patreon, there's Goblin Gaming, there's the sponsor that I can never remember. Um, and then there's all our, um, what are they? Social media bits. That's the Twitters, the Facebooks, the Instagrams, um, et cetera, et cetera, and stuff like that. And as always, take care, stay safe. I'll catch you guys next time.